It's time to leave your worries behind and step into the carefree realm of nature, art and philosophy. Because that's exactly what this Prussian palace was built for. Welcome to Sanssouci. I'm Hannah Hummel from DW Travel and today I'm exploring Potsdam's Pleasure Palace. Let's go. Sanssouci was built in the mid-18th century by the Prussian king Friedrich II, also called Frederick the Great. It was his summer palace, his Prussian Versailles. Here, Friedrich wanted to pursue his hobbies undisturbed and escape the pomp and ceremony of the royal court. Sanssouci is French and literally translates into without concerns or without worries, so that's exactly what my motto today is going to be. Quick tip to make your day as carefree as King Friedrich would have wanted it to be, book your tickets for the palace in advance online to avoid the long queues. Entry into the gardens is free and that's where I'm starting my tour. Sanssouci is so much more than the palace itself, the park is made up of over 300 hectares of beautiful terraces, vineyards and plants. In 1990, both the gardens and the palace itself were added to the UNESCO World Heritage List. This magnificent fountain is a feature that was also copied from Versailles. It's decorated with sculptures of Roman gods and Venus is particularly special. She was actually gifted by the then owner of Versailles, the French King Louis XV. This one now is a copy. The original is at Berlin's Bode Museum. Let's go in. Since we're filming, we get the whole place to ourselves and I even get a private tour. I want to learn more about the famous Prussian king and the splendid home he built here. So Birgit Morgenroth has kindly agreed to show me around. Wer war König Friedrich II? Friedrich war ein preußischer König, eigentlich der preußische König. Er war derjenige, der Preußen viele Eroberungskriege geführt hat. Er war derjenige, der sein Volk, also sein Land, Preußen, geliebt hat. Und warum hat er Schloss Sanssouci hier gebaut? Hier oben, das ist ein kleiner Hügel, und auf diesem Hügel hat er seine Gruft errichtet, also sein Grab. Das war sehr früh in seiner Regierungszeit und irgendwann hat er gedacht, oh, das ist ein wunderschöner Hügel. Nur hier zu sterben, das ist viel zu schade. Und deshalb hat er sich hier ein Schloss errichtet, ganz oben. Und er hat gesagt, das ist nur für mich. Also das ist mein Lustschloss, mein Sanssouci. Ich möchte hier sein ohne Sorgen. Der berühmteste Gast in diesem Zimmer war Voltaire. Friedrich war sehr bekannt dafür, dass er sozusagen so eine Tafelrunde, ähnlich wie Arthur, eine Tafelrunde mit Philosophen, allerdings nicht mit Rittern, sondern mit Philosophen hat er veranstaltet. Und hier sieht man jetzt durch das Fensterglas die Bibliothek. Wow. Visitors aren't allowed in to what King Friedrich considered to be his holy room. But you can still see the beauty of the wood panelled domed library by peeking through the window. And this is where the king lived and worked, writing poetry and philosophical texts. He rarely slept more than four hours a night. Such was the Prussian way. Hier war zum Beispiel da hinten das, ähm, dieser Bereich, der war der Schlafbereich und er nächtigte wirklich in so einem Metallbett. Das ist der Sterbesessel von Friedrich dem Großen. Ja, und das ist auch wirklich das Original. King Friedrich was also buried here and I'm going to visit his grave and I brought a rather unusual souvenir to place on top of it. And it seems I'm not the only one. So why are people laying potatoes on the king's grave? Well, before King Friedrich, potatoes weren't really eaten in Germany. Actually, they were more used just for decoration. But King Friedrich passed an order to increase potato crops in the country following bad harvests and subsequent famines. According to legend, he tricked local farmers into planting more of the so-called apple of the earth by posting soldiers around the potato fields to protect them. It worked. Highly valued goods taste even better. So here we are, a token for the potato king. 
And what would a relaxing day at Prussian Palace be without a decadent lunch to enjoy? There are a few restaurants and cafes to choose from at Sans Souci, but this one is tucked away in a quiet spot in the gardens and is the perfect spot to try some traditional German food, with potatoes, of course, and enjoy a glass of German Riesling. Sitting here tucked away in these gardens, I'm really starting to settle into the carefree lifestyle that the park represents. Sansa Sea Palace is definitely the main event, but there is another much bigger palace behind me that we're going to go look at now because King Friedrich needed more than one. The new palace was built at the end of Prussia's Seven Years' War in the 1760s. King Friedrich sought to demonstrate the power and glories of Prussia and wanted to show off the strength of its finances. He himself rarely stayed in the castle. It was mainly for guests. Let's go check it out. The new palace has around 300 rooms, all decked out in an excessive splendor of marble, stone and gilt. Can you believe the whole palace only took six years to build? The main festivities hall, or marble room, extends over two floors. The fresco on the ceiling here is one of the largest in Europe. Another must-see room is the Grotto Hall. The 600-ton structure is encrusted with over 24,000 shells and semi-precious stones. So this is now the private area of King Friedrich, and he liked to think of himself as somewhat of an art connoisseur. So he has quite a lot of classic paintings, but also several modern ones thrown in as well. Works by Flemish masters Peter Paul Rubens and Antony van Dyck are displayed alongside works conceived in the Dutch style. King Friedrich would perform concerts for his guests here. He was a passionate flute player and composed 120 flute sonatas. So obviously from the piano we can see that this was a real music room, but if you look carefully, there are instruments embedded into the ceiling that used to be real instruments and are now gilded in real gold. All of the 3,600 books in the library are written in French, since that was the language Friedrich preferred over German. He often had the same set of books in all of his several castles, so that wherever he was, he had access to all of them. This palace is also located in Sans Souci Park. However, it was built about 100 years later than the other two. The Orangerie Palace was built by a successor to Frederick the Great, King Friedrich Wilhelm IV. He was considered a romantic who loved Italy. You can tell, right? I could spend hours walking around the beautiful gardens here, especially in the golden evening light. But my time at Sans Souci is reaching an end, for now. I have to say, it seems like King Friedrich the Great really knew how to live the good life, and I got the chance to experience a little bit of that today. I hope you get the chance to chill out one day here too. If you enjoyed our video today, don't forget to give it a like and leave a comment down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, DW Travel, for more amazing content.